So if you feel like you've got trauma from looking at stupid shapes in abstract reasoning puzzles, and if you feel like you can look at a pattern for hours and still not get it, this is the video for you because I scored an 870 in the AR subtest on the UCAT and I'll show you exactly how I did it. My name's Emil and I scored in the 99th percentile on the UCAT in 2020. And this video is the fourth video in my UCAT crash course series sponsored by MedEntry. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the abstract reasoning subtest share my general strategy for answering questions, tips and tricks, and go through some questions live on camera myself. The abstract reasoning subtest has been updated for 2022, and now instead of answering 55 questions in 13 minutes, you have to answer 50 questions in 12 minutes, which still gives you around 14 seconds per question. Now, although this sounds absolutely terrible, usually the questions come in sets of five, which means that you have approximately 70 seconds to answer each pattern and all of the questions associated with it. There are three main question types in total, set A, set B, neither, complete the statement and complete the series. And overall, this subtest tests your ability to see patterns and understand how patterns work. Now, as usual, I'll start my general strategy with a mindset, which is always about timing. In the AR subtest, the maximum amount of time that I would spend on a pattern if I didn't get it would be around 40 to 45 seconds. If you don't get a pattern in the abstract reasoning subtest relatively quickly, you could probably stare at it for 15 minutes or even longer without even getting it. So it's really important that if you don't get a pattern that you move on and do other patterns that you'd be more likely to get. When I first look at a question and a pattern, the first thing that I do is think of a list of triggers that go off in my head. What I mean by these triggers is that a lot of abstract reasoning patterns have very common themes such as intersections, floating shapes, clock patterns or curved sides and other patterns. And as a result, there are a lot of triggers that you should see in your head whenever you see a pattern for the first time. For example, if I see a pattern that has intersections, in my head, I'm instantly thinking about the number of intersections, the number of enclosed spaces, the number of lines, or the number of intersections and their relation to anything else in the box. Once I've thought of these triggers, I start to go through them systematically, and I like to think of the simplest things first. Continuing on with that intersections example, I probably count the number of intersections in two pretty easy boxes, see if they're the same, and then eliminate whether that one is true. After that, I move on to the next simplest thing, which would be maybe the number of lines. Keep in mind that the simplest things are most likely to be the pattern in the vast majority of cases, and therefore you wanna pick them up with a high degree of accuracy and relatively quickly as well. The next thing that I do is if I don't get the pattern in 30 to 40 seconds, I'll flag the entire set of questions and just move on as quickly as possible. And this links back to the mindset of timing that I thought about before. And you really don't want to waste time on questions that you might not have gotten even if you had an hour to do them. When I'm looking for patterns, I'll only look for concrete rules. What this means is that a pattern must appear in every single box for it to be a pattern. And if it doesn't appear in one box, that means that it cannot be the pattern for the set. As the final step of my process, if I find a pattern relatively easily, what I'll do then is I'll look again for a secondary pattern, which might be something that adds a few extra qualifying features to the pattern. For example, with the intersections example I was going before, the first pattern, the primary pattern, might be that there are two intersections in every box. However, there might also be a secondary pattern, which is that there is at least one triangle in every box as well. I usually won't spend too long looking for a secondary pattern because by that time, I might have already spent 20 to 30 seconds. So once I'm satisfied with the pattern that I've found, then I'll look through the answers really quickly, mark them all, and move on to the next question. Now, starting with my tips and tricks for the subtest, my first tip is to separate questions in review view when you do them in practice. When you do abstract reasoning questions, you'll often probably find that you're getting them wrong. And if you don't, you probably don't need to watch this video. But in the questions that you're getting wrong, it's nice to think of the patterns that you could have gotten and the patterns that you couldn't have gotten. It's nice to separate patterns into these categories because some of the patterns that you'll get in practice might be things that are kind of unreasonable to get or just way too difficult and unrealistic to the standards of the test. As a result, you don't wanna focus on why you're not getting these 
these super, super hide patterns that you might not have gotten anyway, you wanna focus on the patterns that you look at them and you think, oh, of course, I should have gotten that. And you wanna think about why you didn't get the pattern in those cases and try to improve on that as much as possible. What I would do from here is I would compile a patterns document and also a triggers document. Whenever you see those patterns that you could have gotten pretty easily, but you didn't seem to get in the test, what I would do is I would put all of those into a patterns document and separate them by what type of pattern they are. For example, shape patterns, color patterns, number patterns, and then just look through those over time to see whether there are any patterns in the types of things that you aren't able to see. In addition, when you're doing reviews, I'd make a list of common triggers that you see in questions. So for example, this would be intersections, floating shape, colors, um, circles arranged in a three by three arrangement, things like that that often come up in questions. This can be really, really helpful because over time it gives you an idea of what it is that you might have a weakness in seeing and it also helps you refine that skill of getting the idea of what the pattern is straight away when you see it. This links into the third tip, which is to familiarize yourself with common patterns and to look through them systematically. There are in general three common mnemonics that people tend to use, uh, scans, casinos, and carts and you should get yourself somewhat familiar with these mnemonics so that you can use them if you're ever in doubt with a certain question. My fourth tip is to always focus on the simpler boxes within the questions. More often than not, it's much easier to see a pattern in its simplest elements rather than in the ones that are most difficult. In all set A, set B, neither questions, the pattern has to be present in every single box. So what that means is in the box with the least elements, the pattern will be easier to see than in a box that has tons of elements and possibly tons of patterns. My final tip is to focus on the different techniques for each of the question types. The general strategy I've talked about so far in this video is mostly for those set A, set B, neither questions. However, the other questions like complete the series and complete the statement tend to have a slightly different way in which you approach the questions, which I'll go through when I'm doing questions live. However, I'd highly recommend getting used to the strategy required for each of those questions because then you can get really familiar with them and be able to answer them quickly and go through the motions of answering them as easily and efficiently as possible. Often you'll find that once you get the strategy down, it's pretty easy to get those questions almost 100% of the time right and with a high degree of speed and efficiency as well. Before I move on to doing each of those question types live, I'd like to thank MedEntry for sponsoring this series. MedEntry is a UCAT preparation platform that I used when I was preparing for the test and I find that they have questions that are most similar to the actual test. They've just launched their new LMS platform and I personally think it looks amazing and it has skills trainers and interactive curriculum, thousands of practice questions and over 20 mock exams for you to use to practice. So sign up using the link in the description box down below to get 15% off their online or platinum subscriptions. Okay, so I've pulled up MedEntry's abstract reasoning question bank here. And the first question type that we'll go over will be the set A, set B, neither questions. With these questions, the first thing that I think of is immediately when I look at the pattern, I wanna think of a list of triggers that go off in my head. So in this question, I see these uh, crosses and I see these circles and I see that there's different colored circles and the crosses in different locations. I see that in most of the boxes, there are some spaces. So immediately I'm thinking position, uh, number of crosses to the number of circles, perhaps some relation between the number of black circles, and then something to do with maybe the arrangement of the circles in comparison to the crosses. So what I'll look at then is since I'm looking at the pattern and I thought of that, what I'll look at is perhaps the position of the crosses. So I see looking at the easiest two boxes, probably these two, I'll see that there's crosses in these corners. And then I'll see with these ones that there's crosses in the diagonal corners as well. And then I'll just look in every box to see if there's crosses in every corner diagonally. So in most of the boxes, there seem to be crosses diagonally. And then what I'll look at is to see is, okay, are there um, a set of secondary patterns that might be true in this situation? So I also see that here there are three in a diagonal row here and three in a diagonal, uh, three in a rows here. Um, but then I don't really see much of a pattern coming up between the circles and any of the crosses here as well. So then I might think, okay, the pattern might just be that there is a cross in diagonal corners in set A. Then looking at set B, I'll see that, okay, for the most part, there are crosses 
over the horizontal um, horizontal sides. So there's cross here, cross here, cross here, cross here, cross here, cross here, and there's a cross here and a cross here, and there don't seem to be any other patterns that I can see. So in the test, what I'll do is once I got that pattern, I'll just click it all and move on. Um, for now though, that's also what we'll do because I'm not sure about whether there are any secondary patterns, but we might be able to see that in the answer. So looking at this test shape, we'll see that it's probably in the corners here. So this is probably gonna be set B. Um, here, there's no crosses in any of the corners, so neither. Um, again, the same thing, neither. Here, it's in the corners, so it's set A. Here, it's in um, the sides, horizontal sides, so probably set B. And so, as you can see, that's why it's important to get a nice list of triggers um, to see of when you see these questions, so that you get an idea of, okay, these are the things that I'm looking at, and you can very quickly eliminate what you might think the patterns are. So we'll have a look at these patterns, see if we got them all right, and we'll see if there was a secondary pattern that we might have missed. Yep, so as you can see, we got those questions all right, and we'll have a look at what the pattern was, and we'll see that, yep, that was exactly the pattern, and there weren't any other distractors in this set, and there wasn't a secondary pattern in this set. That's an important lesson, which is that you don't have to find a secondary pattern every time to actually get the question right and move on from it. Okay, so doing another set A, set B question type, um, here we see just shapes and immediately in my head, uh, the triggers that I'm thinking of is something to do with side, number of circles, uh, number of sides on the shape, or number of, um, yeah, just number of sides in the box in total. So here, since there are these black circles and these big shapes, I'll have a look at, firstly, just counting the number of circles. I'll see that, yeah, they're quite different in these ones here. But then what I'll do is I'll compare the boxes and I'll see that in um, these boxes, there's always a triangle and there's two black circles. So then what I'm thinking is, okay, the number of black circles is probably two minus the number of sides on the biggest shape. And that's the pattern that I'm thinking of here. So then I'll just confirm that with the other boxes. So I'll see four sides on the biggest shape, three circles, one, two, three, four, five sides on the biggest shape, four circles. And here we've got um, an eight-sided shape and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles, which is exactly right. So I've probably found the pattern here. Then looking in set B, I'll see, okay, it's probably gonna be related to the pattern in set A. It's probably to do with the number of something. Um, so we see the black, the black shape has two sides and there's three white squares. Um, again, three sides, four, and then four and five, three and four. So I think I've got the pattern here, which is that the number of white circles is one more than the number of sides on the black shape. So looking at that here, this would be four sides, five squares. So set B, um, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then only four, so it's neither. Uh, one, two, three, four, four, again, gonna be neither. One, two, three, this is gonna be set A. Uh, one, two, three, this is gonna be neither. Um, because we don't have anything like that in either set. So we'll have a look at these questions as well. And as you can see, we got all of those right, which is great. And we'll move on to the next question type, which is completing the series. So this is the completing the series question type. And in these question types, the recommendation that I give always is to just focus on one single element in any of the questions. So here I see that there's this series that's going on and in each of the boxes, um, something is changing. So what I'll start with is I'll just start with this first circle and I'll see where it goes in the next boxes. So I see, okay, this first circle goes uh, one position to the right, then it goes another position to the right, then it goes another position to the right. So then I know in this last section, the black circle, the first black circle must be here. So then I know that of these answers, B is the only one that could possibly be correct. And I don't even think need to think about the other elements because I've eliminated it straight away from looking at one element, which is why this is so useful. Looking at this question again, I'll do the same thing and just look at one element that is changing throughout the question. So I'll see, first starting with this circle, I'll see that it goes from this corner to this corner, down to this corner to this corner. So it must be in the top left corner in the answer. So then I know that it cannot be A, cannot be C, so it must be B or D, the answer. Then I'll look at a different element to eliminate either B or D. 
I'm just looking at these, I see that it's only this line that changes specifically. So I'll look at where the line, the big line goes. So it goes um, bottom right, bottom left, top left, top right. So it must be bottom right, answer must be B. So here it's easy to see that when you're looking at individual elements in these completing the series questions, it's actually pretty easy to get the answer almost 100% of the time. Just looking at those two questions, we can see that we got them right, which is really good to see. Now moving on to the last question type in the AR subtest, this is the complete the statement type questions. So in this question type, I recommend having the same idea and just looking at individual elements and seeing what happens to them. So in this first one, I might start with this white rectangle here and I'll see that in the next shape, it exactly goes opposite and changes color. So then I'll see that this circle on the other side also did the same thing. I'll check that for all of the other boxes. I'll see that it inverts or reflects and then changes color um, to the opposite color, which is essentially the pattern. So then I know, um, looking at this one, sorry, what I can start with is this triangle perhaps, and I'll know it'll be black and here, and there'll be this shape reflected here as well. So I'll look at all of these and I'll see that it's not gonna be A because there's no black triangle. Um, it could be B, could be C, it's not gonna be D. So now looking between B and C, I'll check which part of these look different. And I'll notice that they actually, uh, it, the only difference is this rectangle and this circle here. And we'll see that there's no rectangle in this one here, so it must be B. So in this second question, I'm again looking at elements individually. I see that this top triangle has essentially moved down into the bottom triangle in this one. So therefore I know that with this one, this top circle must move down into this circle in the next following question. So that will probably give me B, which is the answer to this question. Checking my answer to those two questions makes me see that we got them both right, which is excellent. And hopefully you can see that the complete the statement and the complete the series questions are actually quite manageable when you just focus on one element and check where it goes in the next one and the next one and the next one, and then use that to eliminate your answer options. I hope seeing me answer those questions was useful. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and maybe check out this video where I go through the QR subtest and this playlist for all of my UCAT videos.